Hi, I'm Ian Burrell, and I'm going to talk about the role of oxygen in fermentation. So, to begin with, yeast, and this is uh, focusing on yeast for brewing, uh, they both respire and ferment, so they can use oxygen and, and breathe, or they can switch into fermentation, which is an anaerobic process. That's called the Crabtree effect, uh, and it happens when there's a sufficiently high concentration of sugar. In the case of beer, that's half of a percent weight weight of sugar. So it pretty much always happens, it always switches into fermentation in these cases. So, if you're going to be in fermentation, why do they need oxygen? It's quite confusing. They don't need it to ferment, they don't need it to survive, and fermentation by definition means without oxygen. So why do they do it? Well, cells need lipids. In particular, they need the sterols right there uh, to make their cell membranes healthy. And so they can uh, obtain these sterols by either processing it from oils, right? They need the lipids that are in their environment. However, uh, oils never come alone, they're always in pairs. So you always have saturated and unsaturated available. If you have saturated fatty acids, well, then they make esters. Esters have a fruity flavor if you were to taste it. Uh, and that could potentially be a positive attribute. So sometimes that's tasty to have a fruity beer. Other times, people don't want the beer to be fruity at all. Uh, so it can be negative. On the other hand, unsaturated fatty acids are almost always bad. Typically, once fermented and used to make their, uh, well, the sterols for their cell membranes, it's considered goaty, soapy, or fatty. So three words that we don't really want to have in beer at all. So it's an extremely negative attribute. And sadly, they're both present all the time. So if you're not going to add oil, then what happens? Well, your yeasts are going to be weak, they're going to have very low alcohol tolerance, so they might not even make a full fermentation. Uh, they're not going to bud, budding is when they multiply, that's how the yeast multiply. Uh, so they're not going to bud as much because they won't be able to produce the cell membranes, so lower cell density. They can even stop growing entirely if it's that bad. Uh, the lag phase is going to be much longer. Uh, and then fermentation might be entirely incomplete and you wind up with a very sweet beer because of so many residual sugars. Um, so yeast will try to produce their own sterols uh, or own lipids for the cell membranes using the sterile biosynthesis. That, however, requires oxygen and that's why we give oxygen to yeast when brewing beer. So oxygen is very positive, but can also be very negative. Um, if you put a lot of yeast into the beer, they won't need to reproduce much or bud um, to hit the concentrations necessary to <coughs> ferment. So they're going to have residual oxygen because they won't consume it all. Residual oxygen, in turn, is uh, pretty bad because it leaves it available for oxidative reactions. Uh, and then yeast can also consume uh, things like ethanol with the oxygen. So to start with, the big pitfall of oxygen is trans 2 non -enol, uh, which tastes kind of like wet cardboard. It also smells like wet cardboard if you ever smelled it. Uh, it's responsible for the stale flavor in beer, or beer going stale, uh, and it's detectable at 10 parts per billion, which is extremely small. So that's exactly one grain of salt inside a 100 liter barrel of T2N, and it's considered ruined. So it's almost nothing, and 100% of humans so far are capable of detecting T2N. So not all tongues can detect all flavors, but it seems that all tongues can detect T2N, which is terrible. Um, and then there's also the process of going from ethanol to vinegar, acetic acid. So that can happen by oxidation, and it can also happen by yeast. So yeast can consume ethanol and produce acetic acid if there's oxygen present, or it'll do it on its own. So you can get a very vinegary beer, a very sour beer because of the acid. So in conclusion, oxygen can be the solution to uh, this sterile biosynthesis. However, you have to delicately dose it. Oil can also be a solution, but it's, you know, has its own problems, and using neither of them is probably the worst option available. Thank you. Here are my references.